Hello guys, this is Amol Khedkar. I welcome you to this video. So today I'm going to talk about why I really like Jordan Peterson. You might have heard about this person. Many of you might not know him. Uh, he is or he was in fact a professor at the University of Toronto and he challenged uh, when the university told him about uh, using different pronouns for uh, different genders. So he's a pretty controversial person, but personally, I really like this guy. And I will tell you in this video why exactly I like him and why, you know, his views are, uh, you know, pretty radical, but uh, they really reflect the kind of uh, society that we live in. So this is an article from the Topical magazine, which says Jordan Peterson's success shows how feminists get masculinity wrong. So let's get started. So let's get started. Jordan Peterson's increased popularity should be viewed as a chance for feminists to introspect on male identity. So Jordan Peterson has a really pretty, uh, you know, uh, astounding views about uh, gender bias, gender equality, uh, the roles of uh, different sexes. So yeah, he's a pretty controversial person, but I really uh, adhere to his views about feminism and why pseudo feminism, which uh, has become like a vulture feminism in today's world is uh, literally just, uh, you know, eradicating the norms in the society. Professor, author and public speaker Jordan Peterson has become a massively influential individual in recent years, despite his controversial messages. His self-help exercises, lectures and books have led to hundreds of success stories concerning coping with mental illness and overcoming addictions, to name a few. Some of the messages he promotes, however, are undoubtedly regressive in our current equality-promoting society. His views on monogamy and traditional gender roles, for example, call for a return back to a previous more unequal time. So, uh, you know, I personally think this overly liberal attitude in today's society is very, very toxic. I really call these people as pseudo liberals or limousine liberals. I've made videos about these people and uh, that is the reason why people you know, are just detesting the global elite. They don't want to trust anybody. That is one of the reasons, you know. And that's why, you know, uh, I think uh, this entire agenda of pseudo-feminism was propagated by uh, the big corporations because they want more tax-paying people. It is no surprise then that he has faced a wave of criticism from feminists who see him and his following as an obstacle to gender equality. While originally Jordan Peterson's critics responded to him with contempt and widespread denouncement, more nuanced approaches have since been taken. People are beginning to suggest that Jordan Peterson's success is more than just a misogynist backlash to the social progression of women. For example, Jack Lewis has suggested that Jordan Peterson's fan base is a natural reaction to the unease brought about by changing gender norms and identities. This is an extremely important topic and I really wanted to, you know, get my opinions out there because, you know, people don't talk about uh, these things very openly in the online space. And uh, that's why, you know, as you can see, uh, Jordan Peterson's fan base is a natural reaction to the unease brought about by changing gender norms and identities. This unease may lead young men in particular to follow a man offering a place for them to belong, a place where the gender identity is not uncertain. While this analysis does take a far more respectful approach to the people who rationally support Jordan Peterson's message, it still leaves a question unanswered. Why exactly do men feel so uneasy about their changing gender identity? In response to this, many quickly offer up the solution that men are simply lamenting their loss of social power and dominance and are pushing back against feminist notions accordingly. So this is like the widespread notion and it is a false notion in my honest opinion that, uh, you know, people just keep on saying this kind of, uh, you know, unverified conspiracy that, uh, you know, men are simply lamenting their loss of social power and dominance and are pushing back against feminist notions. However, why is the majority of Jordan Peterson's audience consistently characterized as both male and young? So this guy's audience is consistently both male and young. If it truly were the loss of social power and dominance that Jordan Peterson's fans are lamenting, his audience should be comprised of middle-aged and older men. 
given that his audience is believed to be lamenting what is being lost the social group that has actually experienced these aspects of social power and domination should be the ones who are pushing back with the most force rather the characteristically young audience of jordan peterson may suggest something else it might be that these young men feel uneasy with how society currently views them perhaps they like all people feel that they should have a say in how their identity should be constructed you know this is something that is very very uh, needed in today's world because uh, uh, we are living in a very uh, fake sort of world where you know people say one thing and they do the exact opposite of it and political correctness in my honest opinion has ruined the world and that is really one of the reasons why i've started this channel because i really wanted to get my opinion out there without any obstructions without any holds barred because political correctness has just made a complete mockery of how we lead our lives and that has really uh, you know made people question uh, you know what exactly to believe in uh, that's why many people follow this guy if men are the most powerful social group though surely they define what their identity is maybe but this classically defined idea of masculine identity has long been the subject of public ridicule and social upheaval and for good reason feminism as a social movement has made great strides in identifying how male identity has historically harmed women and how its perpetration causes gendered inequality worldwide one of the largest and most influential steps in this regard was the introduction of intersectionality into gender uh, gender identity gender issues so uh, you know what i think is that uh, i personally think that uh, male and female should be treated equally nobody should be above one another but the current uh, culture feminism or the pseudo feminism that has penetrated into the indian so- and indian society or even the global society as such has uh, just propagated this idea that females are somehow better than men and uh, they uh, you know have like a more superior gender than men and which is just plain bullshit intersectionality is the understanding that different intersectional operations felt upon individuals such as race gender age and so on are not separable so this is again one more bs thing that is being you know uh, spread out in the entire uh, public space thus a black woman does not feel the operations of black people and women separately and as separate issues she experiences oppression as a black woman her intersectional operations of being black and being a woman do not add up they multiply and create something uniquely oppressive This view has led to the understanding that the oppression felt by some women is vastly different than the oppression felt by others. Importantly, it led to the understanding that the oppression felt by women is not universal and that solutions to wide gender equality will not always be solutions to the gender inequality of the elderly or the gender inequality of black women. One thing the idea of intersectionality also aided in popularizing is gender politics, is identity politics. Identity politics is the organization of individuals of a particular identification whether that be race, sexuality, gender or so on to promote the political rights of the group. While many have seen this method as understandably divisive, there can be no doubt that it has been for the most part successful in promoting the interests and rights of identity groups. So you know uh, why do you think so many people are so angry all the time? I have made many videos about these. Uh why do you think so many people in america are just completely fed up with the system they don't believe in anything you know just look at the george floyd protests i have made multiple videos about this and uh, they are available on this channel just look at the george floyd protests and you know uh, why do you think people are so unhappy because the politicians have explored this kind of uh, gender identity politics for long long time they have exploited it to the fullest possible extent and right now people are not not buying this bullshit anymore implicitly identity politics promotes the message that you should take pride in your identity and you should feel solidarity with those who identify the same as you this has no doubt been a very powerful message that many have brought to heart and have employed to overcome the social oppression they feel no person should feel ashamed or marginalized because of factors out of their control or because who of who they are or so the argument goes this message promoted by identity politics is not one that all people feel everyone should take to the heart in fact to many feminists this message would be considered sexist and harmful if a white male were to take it up so you know this kind of uh, vulture feminism that i've seen around many times is uh, literally just a very very insane idea that uh, you know any time like a male tries to uh, 
you know uh, stand up for his identity the females just feel that they are being oppressed uh, you know which just doesn't make any sense and i think the sushant singh rajput controversy also goes on to say something like this because you know it also uh, tells you that uh, why are men always oppressed in this kind of you know equal world that we live in you know i personally think that uh, there is no need for uh, women empowerment nowadays women have had a whole lot of empowerment we should really go towards uh, men empowerment at this point because you know uh, this is something that should really be talked about in the uh, in the public space and many people are afraid to say something like this because then uh, they think that they will be you know uh, regarded as male chauvinists or you know they will be regarded as uh, you know thinking of uh, you know in in the previous generation or something like that so that's why you know these kind of things are really very very controversial and i like this person jordan peterson for bringing up this topic indeed it would be problematic if white males were to continue to proudly identify with a masculine identity that has caused the oppression of countless others throughout history thus white males uh, thus white males those having the most advantageous and privileged identities are not meant to proudly identify with masculinity they are pushed to problematize it so you know even in indian society today men are uh, not at all you know uh, urged to uh, celebrate their masculinity you know it it's it's a proud thing to be a man i am telling this to you as a man it's a proud thing to be a man and you should not at all be ashamed of it uh, but right now the with the you know vulture feministic mindset that has penetrated into the societies all over the globe uh, you know this kind of uh, thing is just uh, you know becoming like a sort of uh, uh, you know a pandemic that is raging across the entire world the truth is that in all likelihood most men if not all men have engaged in behavior that was inappropriate made a woman feel uncomfortable or was even abusive so this is again a you know radical feminist saying and i completely disagree with this uh, with this statement now this another another p- woman is saying this normally this is why i reject whether men can be called feminists where is their work it, is it more than a t-shirt and not being aggressively sexist again a radical feminist uh, voicing her opinions now we can add to the wine list the fact that many white men feel they can no longer get ahead or get an advantage because of identity politics if the courts in the courts presented above some ideas stand out all men make women feel uncomfortable sometimes so this is like an inherent assumption that many uh, feminists make that all men make uh, women feel uncomfortable sometimes which is just plain bs men cannot be feminists they need to work for the opportunity to support equality white men have an issue with identity politics because it ruins their social advantage in some sense all of these messages have a point bringing to light so- social facts that are problematic and are no doubt true of some so there is some truth in these arguments but i don't buy them entirely however all of these courts also uh, assimilate all men or all white men into one category and in the same breath label their identity as problematic perhaps then it is this message that jordan peterson's fans are reaching to maybe they are beginning to feel as if the problematizing of their identity is not something they want to endorse such an explanation would explain why they are supporting a figure who is offering a positive view of male identity you know i perfectly uh, support this person and i am not ashamed to say that uh, you know jordan peterson really is offering a positive view of male identity and that is really something that is needed in today's world it is this insight that feminists should take to heart the problematization of male identity without offering a valid solution or alternative positive identity to endorse will only be met with opposition feminism has made amazing strides in highlighting harmful and oppressive aspects concerning the social views of gender but the movement has only sought to promote the construction of female identity feminism has only sought to uh, you know promote the construction of female identity conversely the male identity is signified and, and highlighted as harmful and for good reasons but nothing positive is offered to the new generation that can be positively endorsed why would a young man want to identify as male if society is beginning to see male identity as nothing but a problem and this is a very very toxic problem that you can see in the entire landscape and this is this this is again the so called liberal mindset the pseudo liberal and limousine liberal mindsets you know like we will we will uh, Uh, travel in limousines but uh, we will talk about equality those this kind of plain bs and plain you know completely erratic arguments that are being portrayed by the liberal elite which uh, many people just don't buy jordan peterson and his increasing popularity should be viewed as a chance for feminists to introspect it is no longer enough to uh, simply identify an issue as an issue instead solution should be offered otherwise the trend of problematizing masculinity without offering a positive alternative for endorsement will only cause its further condemnation 
Young men will either increasingly resist or begin to normalize the idea that they are an issue because of an identity they do not even want to endorse. So, you know, this is really something that uh, I really wanted to get out there because, you know, uh, I've seen a whole lot of uh, radical feministic ideas that are being portrayed even in Indian society and even in many uh, parts of the globe, which are just complete bullshit. And I really wanted to, you know, uh, uh, just nip them in the bud once and for all, because even men have the right to... Uh, you know, try to uh, make their own identity and they have the right to feel good about their own gender. You know, fe feminists are just, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, sidestepping the fact that there are two genders in the world. And I also wanted to, uh, you know, get my opinions about the gender roles because Jordan Peterson also talks about uh, gender roles a whole lot. You know, in the earlier society, uh, men and women have specified gender roles, right? Uh, men used to go out and do work and women used to stay at home and they used to do all the, you know, normal things at home. But uh, what the current society has done is that it has literally just eradicated these boundaries and it has just said that everybody is to do everything else. Which uh, And that's why I think the current uh, familial structure is completely eradicated. That's why many people are literally getting separated after six months of marriage. This is the exact reason of this. You know, why do you think so many people are just so unhappy all the time? Why do you think half of the people in America and in Canada just don't believe in marriage anymore? It is because of this, because of this vulture feminism and because of this, you know, uh, completely erratic feministic ideas that have penetrated into the society and which have literally just, you know... Uh, hollowed out the entire existence of men. So I'll stop talking here. If you liked my analysis of this video uh, and if you like this article and if you like Jordan Peterson as such, let me know your thoughts in the comments and we can have a fair and square discussion. And uh, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel for more videos like these. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.